Hey everybody, this is Robot here from Vespa Motorsport, the exclusive dealer here in San Diego, California, also known as ScooterWest.com for all things Vespa related here in North, North America. Whether you have a modern Vespa or a vintage Vespa, we got you covered. So here I got the 2020 Primavera's trickle in. I want to go over the features, what's changed from the previous year to the new years coming in and the colors. So let's get down and dirty. So what's changed between the 2019s and 2020s? First of all, they now have the European LED headlight that's included with a scooter. You no longer need to add it. It doesn't have that ancient looking incandescent headlight. Headlight comes right on, right when you turn the key switch on, high beam, low beam. It works very well at night. Uh, the other thing that's changed, is the price is going up, of course add more stuff to it, price is gonna go up a little bit. Plus they got some new colors, that's the exciting part. The Primavera comes in three different flavors. You have the standard Primavera, which comes in the standard dragon red that they've had for several years. White, black, along with this new color, a mint green that has a slight metallic tint to it. It's a very nice color, works very good with the, the Primavera. It's certainly my favorite color for this year. And not here yet is there's a dark metallic blue as well. On to the additional two flavors of the Vesta Sprint. Right here I'm sitting on the Yacht Club Edition. It runs $100 more and has the extra flat blue trim both on the front, the floorboards, the battery cover, the wheels, and a special seat. So the Yacht Club features a special badge. It's in the same flat blue with the chrome YC on it. And the Primavera Sport, which is pretty much unchanged for 2020, other than the LED headlight now is included, comes in the three flat finish colors, along with the deluxe instrumentation. That's a color LCD screen. So the Primavera Sport, Along with the LCD screen, it has a different trim package with the metallic gray. It's got the larger headlight bezel. You can check out my other video for the 2019 Primavera Sport. Pretty much covers all the features of this scooter. All right, let's go over all the features of this Primavera, starting from the rear and moving to the front. First of all, you got the grab rail, which is very useful for moving the scooter around. It can be replaced with a flat rack to add a top case to it. You have the LED taillight. Right, well, I don't think it's here. These are dead lights. We do have a kit that converts these to running lights. For the American market, they have these lovely looking pod signals that so many people love so much. Onto the rear fender, pretty much it's pretty self-explanatory there, holds your plate. You have the wheel on this Yacht Club. You can see it's a two-tone wheel, just like the Primavera Sport, but has the blue inlay. If you go on to the standard Primavera, it's got a silver wheel on it, both being 12 inches across the board. All the Primaveras have 12-inch tires. The mint green one features a Midas tire, which is a sportier tire. The the Yacht Club Edition includes a newer style tire called the Pirelli Angel. It's a very good quality tire, lasts quite a long time, much like the Michelin City Grip. It's a welcome addition to be included on the brand new scooter. Good tire there. You have the updated iJet motor, which was first released in 2018. Has some minor um, modifications to make the engine quieter along with a little bit more friendly to the environment and slightly better fuel economy. Running on to the floorboards, you have the classic triple stripes for the rubber uh, footrest area. Classic pattern for the Vespa. It's got the center mat that houses the battery. At the very front of the seat, there's a hook that pulls out. You can hang a grocery bag on there find it comes out to be pretty useful if you have the under seat storage, which I'll go over completely full 
and you're coming from the grocery store. You pop the seat, which is done with this button right here. And starting with the seat itself, you can hear it has an electronic actuator, which is a very deluxe feature only found on the 150 Primavera. The 50cc Primavera just uses a standard key to release the seat. Still includes a toolkit, enough to remove a spark plug, remove the battery, and make adjustments to the rear shock. Got the owner's manual, service manual, the red master key. These 150cc Vespas include an immobilizer chip. You can actually expose the chip right there for testing. So if I had this chip flipped out, the scooter will not start. Just a test for the mobilizer system. Very good system. Somebody can attempt to steal it. If they don't have the electronic chip, they're not going to be able to uh, get the scooter started. The underseat bucket is rather large on this model. You can fit many full-size, full-face helmets in there. Pulls right out and exposes the engine. You see it's fuel injected. You have the air filter, the cylinder head, and moving towards the back is where the wheel, transmission, and muffler reside. And off to the side, they have the fuel tank contoured to the body of the scooter. Holds just around two gallons of fuel, the total capacity about eight liters. Uh, these scooters get quite good fuel economy, so you should have no problem going over 150 miles per tank full. They have a, a very generous reserve, so there's an indicator on the dash that indicates when the fuel gauge is at the minimum mark and you're on the reserve fuel capacity, which is the very bottom of the fuel tank. In my experience, they go quite a long ways on that reserve capacity. The fuel tank is right here. The cap, it's all secured underneath the locking seat. And moving on to the front of the seat, there's a spot where you can install an optional seat cover. It's a rain cover or moisture cover. Keeps the sun off the seat if you want to protect your seat. Uh, part number's on the screen and in the description. And the all important no pet sticker. Can't put your ferret under here. You can't put the cat under here. No mascotas, por favor. All right. Moving on to the front. You have the ignition key. Center position is where the key comes out, 12 o'clock. Much like all the rest of the Vespa range, you turn it to the far left. You turn the key counterclockwise, 90 degrees, and now the, the scooter's locked down. Can't open the seat, can't open the glove box. Put the key back in. Handlebars are locked at this point. Turn it to the one o'clock position and now you can open the seat with the, the electric actuator or you could push the key in to open the glove box. Whoa, I just found my lunch in here. So you could see the approximate size of the inside of the glove box on the left side. You got enough room for a Chiquita banana and maybe a small uh, flip phone or just a large phone, a pair of gloves. Doesn't hold much. This cap exposes a one amp uh, USB charger for your, your phone or a GPS sat nav if you want to put one on a RAM mount. Anything that uses UP, uh, USB to recharge, it will function with. Uh, only comes on when the ignition switch is on. Let me get my lunch, I'm kind of hungry now. And moving on to the right panel, there's a cover that, that uh, covers up the ABS pump and a fuse block for the scooter. And last but not least, there's a secret switch here that all the thieves want to know all about, and that will open your seat. Moving on to the handlebar controls, pretty standard controls. You turn the ignition on, you got your turn signal that's uh, pushed to cancel. 
left and right. You can see it's got an indicator on the dashboard as well. Just push this, the center button to cancel. It's got a standard horn. High beam, low beam, along with a flash mode with the indicator. You have the rear brake and the front brake on your right. Front being a hydraulic disc with anti-lock brakes. The rear brake being a mechanical drum. It's perfectly adequate. Uh, very low maintenance. Unfortunately, it doesn't have ABS. If you move on up to the GTS model, you're going to get two-channel ABS. So front and rear ABS, disc brakes, front and rear. Uh, with a rear drum during normal services, you typically need to adjust the cable while the hydraulic system is uh, completely self-adjusting. The LED headlight found on the European uh, models since 2018, I think. Now on the US models for the 2020 model year. Pair of round mirrors, fully adjustable. And on the right side, you have a mode switch that toggles between the trip, two trip odometers, a main odometer for the total miles on the scooter, and allows you to so set the clock. And to start the scooter, you pull one of the brakes and push the lower right-hand button, and it will start. And then there's an emergency kill switch that's a uh, a red switch that you could turn the engine off. I typically yeah, recommend good. just leaving that switch alone and using the key switch to turn the scooter on and off. One unique characteristic of all modern Vespas, they have a pair of round tubes that protrude from the underside of the handlebar covers. And so what that works out for is the installation of a windshield. We can see on this Primavera Touring has a pair of metal rods with expanding plugs that go right into the windshield. And you could install one of the many, many windshield options for the Primavera. Anything from the short fly screen all the way up to you know, tall windscreens that give full hand and head pr protection from the weather, depending on what kind of protection you want and the look you're looking for. Moving on down, you have the pair of running lights in the leg shield. Triple LEDs, they've had that for several years. Uh, these don't do anything in the US market. In the rest of the world, they're the turn signals. And we have a kit that replaces the complete set. Part number's on the, the screen. It's quite a few steps to install, but it definitely cleans up the looks of the bikes by getting rid of the four pods that are found on the US market Vespas. The horn cover. You see the triple chevrons, or smiley faces, whatever you want to call them. Horn, um, fender, fender crest, a pair of reflectors for the American market, uh, the single disc brake, pretty traditional standard Vespa affair for the front end. So with the new scooter, you get one service key. I would recommend having an extra key cut as the red master key is just there for programming additional keys. This key again has a chip in it that needs to be programmed. If you cut it, it's, not, it's gonna turn ignition on but not start the scooter. And right here is the key fob for popping open the seat. And there's a little lock button. Just pull that button and it will pop the seat. You can hear the electro actuator. Um, the little horn does not not sound the horn but it does flash your lights. They call that the bike finder feature. When you're looking for your Primavera in the sea of scooters in Milan, Italy. So I'm about 5'8". I think that's about uh, 1.7 meters, something like that. Maybe I got that wrong in metric. The fitment is perfect for me. It's not too short like some of the smaller Asian scooters. And it's definitely not tall like uh, off-road motorcycle or as tall as the the GTS model. You see I can easily flat foot the scooter. I would say if you're shorter than 5'2", I would recommend putting a lowering bracket on the rear shock to bring the scooter down probably another inch. Uh, one thing with all the Vespas, they typically appeal to the larger, taller 
individuals versus the Asian scooters, which are usually a little bit smaller for the similar displacement with a lower seat height. So keep that in mind, before you buy any scooter, you always wanna at least sit on it. Even if you're not to the point where you're gonna ride it yet or learn how to ride it, uh, make sure you're comfortable. You don't wanna be on a vehicle where you're tippy-toeing on it and struggling to keep it up. All right, let's go outside. I'm gonna take it on a test ride. I'll talk about top speed and more. So let's see what the Primavera is all about. Getting on Pacific Highway, which isn't the clogged up freeway, but a higher speed highway with a speed limit of about 55 miles an hour. Primavera gets up to speed pretty effortlessly. I would say the zero to 30 is right in the four to five second range and zero to 60 takes about 20 seconds on this scooter. So GTS 300 is definitely quicker, but this is much quicker than the 50cc model that's more for under 35 mile an hour kind of riding. So how does the Primavera do in the hills? Let's find out. This is Laurel Street. Goes up towards Balboa Park, pretty much east of downtown San Diego. You know, I'm about half throttle. I'm not trying to win any records here with the traffic, but definitely much faster than a 50cc. You know, holds its own no problem up even the steepest hills here in San Diego. So what do I like about the Primavera and Sprint? Well, first of all, the chassis is very stiff on these models. They handle very, very nice for a 12-inch equipped wheel size scooter. And they're pretty zippy. You can easily just navigate the city versus a larger motorcycle or larger scooter you know, with the 14-inch tires. They kind of just don't have that like quick and zippy feel, you know, to, to swerve in and out of stuff, make quick turns. So how's it do on the freeway? Let's find out. Getting right on to five freeway, full throttle, 50 miles an hour. Yeah, I certainly wouldn't want to get into fast lanes on full throttle right now. Gaining on 60. On a downhill, they'll hit about 70. On level ground, 65 is about the top speed for the Primavera. So how is the braking on the Primavera? I feel it's pretty adequate when compared to other scooters of this class. Most, uh, most other scooters in the 150cc class here in the United States do not have any lock brakes. I feel that's an added plus, but we'll see how it does. You know, a little bit of ABS, it certainly stops pretty fast, and that was only the front brakes. Obviously, the rear has no ABS. You could easily skid it out. But both brakes, you could stop it right on a dime. I'll quickly go over some of the accessories that fit the Primavera range of scooters. There's a whole cornucopia of accessories for the whole Vespa line. That's the beauty of the Vespas versus many of the other brands that have very few uh, direct fitment accessories. Starting out with the front, you can get a fender guard. It's not featured on a scooter, but it would be a chrome bar that goes around the fender. Uh, moving on up, there's various front racks. This being the Piaggio original factory front rack. As you can see, this scooter is sold. It's a 2019 Primavera uh, Touring. You can get many different windshields, as I suggested when I pointed out the windshield mounting system on the Vespa. Around the leg shield, you have the chrome trim, but you can also get a tubular front crash bar. So it would be the similar size chrome tubes, and they would call it a crash bar, and it goes around the perimeter of the leg shield and floorboard of the scooter. Moving on back, there's a, a popular option called the rear crash bars. 
Uh, again, many different manufacturers, whether the original Piaggio ones or an aftermarket Faco or Capini. Rear crash bars that typically mount from the passenger peg, wrap around the scooter. You can see many of our videos on installation uh, and videos featuring the various accessories for the Primavera. This scooter features the factory painted top case along with uh, the matching backrest, two separate parts, the top case and the backrest. And to install a top case, you need to purchase the flat rack, which is available in both chrome and black. I think it's PR39, 30, I don't know, we'll have it on the screen. I think I got the, the number wrong. And of course, many of the lighting kit upgrades, whether um, you wanna get rid of the US market lights or you have the older Primavera, maybe you just wanna check out this video, see what the new Primavera is all about and wanna convert your old 2019 to look like a 20, we got you covered. We got the European LED headlight for the older Primaveras. So I hope everybody found that informative or useful on the 2020s. Not much change between the 19s and 20s other than the price and the headlight and this cool new color here. Uh, check us out if you're interested. You can give us a call at Vespa Motorsport, 619-280-1718, extension 604. Sales guys here can let you know what we got. Go on our website, vespamotorsport.com, check out our inventory. If you purchased one of these scooters already and you're looking for accessories, check us out, scooterwest.com. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Vespa Motorsport. Follow me, Robot Vespa. And always helps our channel out. Subscribe, hit the bell so you're updated on the videos. Right now I'm putting out several videos a week. Uh, as it gets into summer, sometimes I get pretty busy. Don't quite have that much time for the volume of videos. And of course, if you wanna do your own maintenance, uh, have, have you covered there in the videos for doing the services on the Primavera model. Along with many other videos in the vintage Vespas, which I love so much. I wish I could do more vintage videos, but unfortunately we're a dealership for the new ones and I love the new ones equally. So love them all. Vespas, Vespas forever, robot here. Till next time, check out our next video coming up for the Primavera 50.